Heading in a direction to make concentrations decrease over time, based on what we have shown earlier and the IPCC's work, means that we have to reverse the trend. Now, let us look at the concentration curves published by the IPCC in the last summary for decision makers report. We see that all estimates place the uh, temperature rise in 2100 above the maximum threshold of 2 degrees Celsius. On the right-hand side of this graph, you can find an indication of the temperatures reached going from 2.6 to uh, 8.5 degrees in 2100, meaning that if we want our future to be compatible with our maximum objective of 2 degrees Celsius, we have to decrease greenhouse effect gas emissions. States would have to make commitments and provide figures and set themselves stabilization objective the uh, importance of which are at the heart of the climate negotiation nowadays. But there are obstacles. For instance, the lack of uh, legibility, of clarity. It is difficult to understand exactly the quantity of reduction needed to meet the commitments. In the uh, Paritech Center of uh, Applied Mathematics, we uh, carried out a study in order to understand, in a given example, where the commitments taken after the 15th Climate Summit, COP15, took place would have taken us. And this conference took place in Copenhagen. This table corresponds to what happened in January of 2010. Some countries committed themselves on emission levels in 2020, and these commitments were integrated in the uh, Copenhagen Agreement. There are three main groups, the acronyms of which you will recognize, Australia, Canada, Japan, USA, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, then fast-growing countries, China and India, and developing countries. The uh, Soviet Union, former USSR, Countries uh, from South America, South Africa, Brazil, Mexico, and uh, these countries, uh, and South Korea, and these countries give us some interesting indications. I'd like you to look at the first column, reduction in 2020. We're tempted to compare the figures, but we also have to uh, have a look at the uh, reference year for which the commitments are taken. We have 1990 for some, 2000 for some, 2005 for others. Also, the measurements, the measures taken to quantify the objective are also uh, different. Sometimes the metrics used are the emission reduction itself. In other cases, we're talking about the carbon intensity equivalent, i.e. the equivalent in the, GDP, in the country's GDP and the greenhouse effect gases associated with the GDP. Therefore, with this kind of indicator, we understand easily that talking about the future one needs to uh, guess what the GDP will be in the future, and therefore it will be difficult to quantify the carbon emissions uh, versus the GDP. So in the last column, we translated what the objectives would really mean. And you can see that for the industrialized countries, the uh, figures are sometimes negative, meaning that the countries have really committed themselves to reduce the greenhouse effect gases, whereas for the fast-growing countries and the developing countries, the reduction ratio is above zero, meaning that these countries are not directly reducing their emissions, but rather reducing the speed at which their emissions are growing. And yet, that means for them a huge effort. Let us not forget it. Subsequently, what we did was um, prolong the commitment 
until 2050 so that we could understand what would happen if beyond 2020 or 2025, the deadlines provided by most countries in the negotiation, we took the picture in 2050 and on which conditions the climatic objective could be met. We devised two different types of commitments, either commitments per country or per groups of countries. And the groups of countries are the three groups that were listed previously, industrialized countries, fast developing countries, and the EV developing countries. And on this picture, you see the countries belonging to each of the groups. And I'll allow you to have a look at the countries listed. They have been classified this way because they share a number of uh, logics in terms of uh, climate change and growth. We started from a uh, reference point called BAU, business as usual, the trend showing what would happen if nothing was done, if we continued bus business as usual and uh, greenhouse effect gases continued being emitted. Now, we only took in consideration carbon dioxide emitted by energy systems in all the countries. Why is that? I will show you later the underlying model based on which we uh, built our curves and we built the trajectory because the uh, carbon dioxide emission level accounts for 80% of the greenhouse effect gas emissions across the globe. And the energy system and uh, energy production, again, account for 80% of the CO2 emissions. So I, we thought that these were the main uh, components that we needed to focus on. The dotted line BAU is the uh, reference scenario versus which we would need to take a number of measures to reduce emissions. The lower curves show what kind of effort each country or groups of country have committed towards. All countries committed themselves on a percentage uh, indicated uh, on the uh, next to the curve. For instance, take the red curve called uh, INDFDC95. It means that industrialized countries and emerging countries have committed to reduce their emissions by 95% versus the level these emissions were at in 2005. This is a very ambitious commitment way beyond all the efforts uh, other countries have committed to and we're not yet with such an effort we're not on the uh, objective of two degrees when developing countries commit in our assumption we simply ask them to commit themselves versus their their own business as usual so their own the, the track they would be on in 2050 if nothing were done. The curve we are interested by right now to reach the two degree objective at the very bottom of the graph is the INDFDC 95 uh, DEV 30. The developing countries commit themselves to a 95% reduction and developing countries commit themselves towards a 30 percent reduction versus their business as usual rate. Now, we understand that without an intense effort made by all the country, it won't be possible to meet the two degree objective. This curve therefore translates uh, commitments taken by each country. There is also a small dotted line uh, called the two degrees. This curve was uh, created with a two-degree objective on the global system. And because there is an underlying model, the uh, system satisfied the constraint and was able to reach the two-degree objective. So we have two curves, one obtained with individual commitments taken by countries and the other one with a global commitment. The two curves are very close, and yet we will see later that 
we should uh, Alors, take the reasoning one step further to understand really what these two curves mean. Currently, as uh, is shown by these curves, the curves that I'm showing now, currently we find ourselves in a situation where the commitments taken are very far from what we simulated in a research laboratory. The curves here are based on the proposals made uh, during the preparation phase uh, for the COP conference. The United States uh, commit themselves to reduce by 26% their emissions versus the uh, level in 2005, and Europe uh, commits to reduce the uh, emissions by 30% uh, versus the 2005 uh, emissions level. We uh, prolonged the curve, and we see that there is a huge distance between the black full line which is a 2% objective, and the uh, red line where everybody committed themselves in the uh, higher top part of the range. 